Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop. This is Chris DeFurio. I hope that this week is turning out to be a beautiful one for you. I'm really excited to talk about this topic today because this is something that we've all experienced in the shop and something that we're really constantly frustrated by, if we're honest, over the years of a business's operation it just becomes way more um, prevalent and more of an issue. And it's something that baristas and customers get frustrated about. This is all about um, exceptions to the rule and and how this kind of uh, thing metastasizes over the years to put a wrench in your hospitality and the guest experience. Now, one of the things that really throws a wrench into an experience, uh, besides the topic we're talking about today, is when a customer gets a shot of espresso or a cup of coffee, and the aftertaste is really kind of dirty, you know, and maybe, and most of the time, honestly, it's because of dirty equipment. Your equipment needs to be clean to make great tasting coffee. And for any job involving cleaning of coffee equipment, I recommend that you use Ernex products. Ernex has been creating cleaning products for us, the coffee industry, for over 80 years. They've developed products for a wide range of very specific equipment um, that we all use, such as cold brew, steam wands, grinders, brewers, espresso machines, and even the world's first cleaner for roasters, which is really amazing. Um, and what's also amazing is that they work hand in hand with professionals from all over the world to make sure that this stuff the uh, we use in the shop to clean our equipment is effective and easy to use. It never ceases to amaze me how powerful Ernex products are. It really makes it fun to clean your equipment. Uh, the bottom line here is that clean equipment does make the best coffee and the best cleaning products are made by Ernex. So get this stuff in your shop. Find out more information by visiting their website, ernex.com. Now, of course, there's a lot of details that go into running a great coffee bar, not the least of which is managing your inventory, keeping your cost of goods in line, always staying stocked with the right stuff. That's all uh, easier said than done, obviously. And you know as well as I do that um, it's a challenge. Every cafe has its own challenges, you know, outside environment, the days of the week, month, whatever, things happen. Uh, and that's where our sponsor, Odeco, comes in to help. Odeco uses artificial intelligence to put your POS data to work, and then it acts as a virtual purchasing agent to place orders for you for exactly what you need based on your sales history, uh, weather, local events, and more. And what's really amazing is it has a 90% accuracy rate in predicting future sales. Odeco AI essentially obsesses over every item to predict, fulfill, and manage your inventory. Sounds amazing, and it is. Odeco has helped their partners cut waste by 50%, reducing food costs by 9%, and it saves owners and managers between two and five hours per week, which is exquisite when you consider how many hours owners and managers work. So if you want to cut waste and save time and streamline your ordering and inventory systems, then you need to sign up for Odeco. That's O D E. K-O. Find out more information by visiting this link, odeco.com backslash keys to the shop and see what a positive impact it has on your shop. Odeco.com backslash keys to the shop. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the exceptions to the rule. In, in particular, the kind of problems that these exceptions to the rule can cause in your shop if they're not properly handled. So the point of today's episode is to give you some actions and some places to focus uh, that will allow you to stay on top of these things. Um, the, you know, when I'm talking about exceptions to the rule, you know that thing where a barista does something slightly different because they thought it was a good idea and then they just keep doing it for weeks and weeks and, and longer and it just becomes part of what they do. So a customer has their favorite barista because they make the drink differently than what the recipe says. There's an exception to the rule. Yeah, this is also when somebody uh, who comes into the cafe all the time doesn't get charged for a particular condiment that is normally charged uh, to other customers. You know, that could be uh, a special syrup or honey or something like that. If that's a policy for everybody and that person doesn't get charged and everyone, quote unquote, knows that, then that's an exception to the rule. 
You can fill in the blank with your own examples, I'm sure, especially if you've been in business a while in cafes. This is something that comes up as the years go on. Because in the beginning, you're introducing the customers to the menu, and it's all new, it's all fresh. But as time goes on, you'll see situations come up. Customers invent situations where you now have to make a decision. You're like, wow, I never thought about that. I never thought about what if a customer wants you know, chai in their drip coffee, or what do I charge for that? Is it chai syrup we use the same price as the vanilla syrup we use? I don't know if we put that together. Well, there's a lot of decisions made in the moment that are essentially surrogate decisions for managerial decisions. They are decisions made by baristas in the moment that become tradition. And that's really where we find a lot of problems. The well-intentioned decisions that turn into traditions, and then they become expected by customers. It's just the way this is. And they order these things confidently expecting to get the exception as the norm, because to them, it's not an exception. To them, it's just normal. And that's where we really, uh, it comes back to bite us in the butt, basically. the uh, Someone who's not versed in this maze of unwritten rules comes in, a new barista, for example, and then dares to charge for that thing that's never charged for. How dare they? <laughs> well, the customer becomes, you know, like uh, a little bit vexed, like, oh, well, I thought it was this price. And the confident barista says, no, it's this price. And they just got out of training. They know what the prices are. They memorized it. They passed their you know, review. Now you've got this battle between two people who are pretty confident in their stance. Now, who's right and who's wrong? It's actually a moot point. It doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. What matters is that there is a failure here in communication. The barista now feels dumb, put on the spot, frustrated, you know, maybe they are now feeling like the customer is becoming defensive. And so they're getting a little bit more defensive. It just is not a good look. Awkward all around. And who dropped the ball on this? Well, if it's a tradition and it's been going on for a long time, management dropped the ball on it. Owners dropped the ball on it. If it's just once that it happened, you have the opportunity to address it properly. It's not yet, you know, uh, an issue. When things turn into traditions, though, these exceptions are metastasized and they create a lot of problems. So what I want to talk about is how to approach these things as they come up. So let's say that a customer um, comes up with this, you know, exception to the rule, which is, uh, for example, I want a vanilla latte. And, 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 you know, I don't, how much vanilla do you put in that? Uh, can I get a quarter of that, just I don't want a whole lot. I don't want it to be too sweet. That's the thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, in a lot of situations, you haven't even hit the vanilla button yet on the register because you're not even sure what to do. You might just put it through as vanilla in the notes and then not charge them for vanilla. And then you're like, Am I, is that right? Because uh, they only wanted a drop. Should I charge? Should I not charge them? Or you hit vanilla and you're like, boy, that's a lot of, you know, it's a huge price for a little bit of vanilla. What do I do? A lot of times baristas will just default to charging the full amount. But there are times where people just don't charge for the little dash of vanilla, especially if a customer does it afterwards. And that's kind of a whole different topic. But um, the way to handle this is not to just uh, sort of sweep it under the rug and do what is normally done, which is to tell your manager something like, hey, Amy, I, you know, had the situation. What should I do? Oh, that's a good question. You should charge them the full amount, Amy says. Well, now the barista is satisfied. They have an answer to that. They have some marching orders. They go in, they apply that knowledge. Now we think we've won, but that's actually not the case. By making a decision in isolation, you're actually creating more problems because now there is just one barista with one piece of information who has to tell other baristas or won't tell other baristas. Either way, they don't really have the authority to tell the baristas what to do. Um, the manager does. And so the action here is to create a solution or a policy that is well communicated. And that's really the main point here that I want to make is when these things come up, you've got to do three things. You've got to consider your values and what you're and make a decision based on that. Then you've got to create a policy about this, 
in your official documents, and then you need to communicate it thoroughly to everybody in, that could possibly be in that situation in the future. So you create the solution, document it as a policy, and make sure that everybody understands and you communicate what it is. So in this situation, my personal solution would be, I don't like the idea of charging somebody the full amount for vanilla because it feels like I'm punishing them for not wanting a lot of syrup. And I also don't want to not charge them because I don't want to give away product. Maybe I should just put a button on the register that says uh, middle ground, just a hint of syrup. (laughs) You know, exactly those words in a button that says just a hint of syrup. 25 cents. I wouldn't advertise it on my menu, but I would put it in the register because that's an exception. That's like one of those things that you can put into the way, the culture, the way we do things. Now I feel confident as a barista when the customer asks for just a drop. I'm like, oh, okay, well, good thing there's a button for that. Good thing that the managers are on top of this when it came up to create solutions that we can lean on into the future. And this is a good example of how you would approach anything. Um, if a customer wants to do something that's out of the ordinary, then create an internal exception that's communicated well based on your values and it's fine. But when you have no communication and no structure and, and it's not understood by everybody, then, you you know, baristas can start to play favorites. Um, drinks are made differently at different parts of the day. Uh, really just staying on top of how people are doing things is one of the jobs of management that's really, really difficult. You might need to walk back some things. If you find out, for example, that a barista, out of the goodness of their heart, just does not agree with the amount of syrup you've got in your mochas, and they don't like it because it's way too sweet, you know, and they put less mocha in there because they think it tastes better. Well, now all of the customers who come in at 5 p.m. during the closing shift get a less sweet mocha. And bonus, I'm saving the company money, and they happen to like my drink better. And now they come in in the morning um, because they have a meeting, and they get a super sweet mocha. What is this, they say? This is different. This is weird. It's inconsistent, and maybe they don't feel confident to bring it up, but they might. And nobody knows what they're talking about because this barista uh, at the evening shift, took it upon themselves to make an exception to the rule. This is the type of thing that once you find it out, you really are going to need to communicate, no, it's not okay. Um, You might have had a good idea. It's best to communicate that with me and the group and suggest it. And as a manager, you can say, well, how did I facilitate this? Okay. Okay. You can say, how did the system fail at this point? Well, Let's say ahead of time, next time we bring a barista on, on onboarding, if you've got ideas for how to improve our menu, here is the way to go about communicating that. Boom, problem solved. So again, the approach would be find out what that exception is, address it in the moment, create a policy, and then corporately share that, communicate it, and make it structured and make it consistent. And then everybody involved, the baristas and the customers, feel taken care of respected, and confident going forward. So I hope that this episode was helpful for you. And there's certainly a lot of things that we could unpack in this episode that you know we just don't have time for in the format of uh, shift break. But I hope that this gave you some motivation to really tackle these things as they come up and, and not to just let them uh, sit there and develop into their own special kind of dysfunction. So yeah, that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you here next week for another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the shop.